Hi guys, um, just a relatively short update on the build. As you can see below, I've now got the flight controller installed and the ESCs. Now, I am denied about what flight controller to use. <clears throat> um, generally, I use the DYSF4 and the benefit of that over the Matic board is it's slightly um, thinner. So in this particular build, it would have been easier to do because it sits lower. <clears throat> because the Matic board has got um, a fairly hefty um, SD card reader in a sat below it, which makes it a little bit difficult in this build. Um, however, I chose to use the Matic board for two reasons. One, it has um, the bit that comes out for your um, battery, li battery lead, um, which obviously is pretty useful on a freestyle um, frame. But more importantly, um, the ESCs and the flight control actually have come off another quad and these ESCs are the HG LRC 28 amp uh, BL Heli S BB2 chip um, and to cut a long story short I bought these for about £4.20 each on a flash sale on Gearbest but when I used them on another quad I had massive um, noise issues in my FP, uh, FPV feed um, and that was using the DYSF4. Um, so I took them off and installed the Speedex um, and my noise issues went away. So I'm guessing these, these ESCs are, are really, really noisy. And also the curious thing is these look identical to the Racer Star 28 amp, which you can buy on Banggood, which come in sets of four. Um, so just be careful on that. But anyway, to cut round to what I was talking about, the reason why I use the Matek um, F4 or 5 as opposed to the DYSF4 is from the reviews I've seen on drone mesh and, and people uh, places like that um, for an all-in-one board um, a PDB and a flight controller this particular board seems to have less noise than its competitors you know the Betaflight F3 um, F4 Flame etc um, so I thought I'd sort of use this board try these ESCs again and if I get the same issue, then these ASCs will just go in the bin and I'll buy some Speedex, etc. Um, so that <clears throat> those two things together really defined what components I was using. So everything is pretty straightforward. The only thing that's obviously difficult on this particular um, frame is if you choose to run the 10mm um, standoffs like I have, obviously you've got very little space to work with. And as I said earlier, this particular board has a fairly hefty SD card on the bottom of it which limits your options even further. Now on the build guide on the Hyperlow website they just show you using um, nylon spacers um, but given this particular board has a very sensitive um, gyro and it allows you to run 32k, 16k I think um, piddle loop and gyro updates um, I need some soft mounting um, in this and whether I've done enough uh, remains to be seen but basically what I've had to do because of the limitations on space are I've run a nylon screw up here and I've attached that with a nut and then on top of that I've used the softest um, silicone um, <coughs> soft mount that I can which sits against the board and then on top of that I've used these little really soft soft mounts and these are pretty similar to the ones you actually get with the um, DYS board and also the race flight boards and generally these little things sit actually in the flight controller holes themselves and then you just slide the flight controller onto whatever you're attaching it to but I've done this before and it works quite well because they're really soft what I'm doing is I'm just sitting them on top of the flight controller and the nylon screws and because of the stack space issue that I've got, I can't really afford to add nylon um, nuts on top because it presses against the top of the uh, board. However, as I mentioned in my original review, what I've done, if I can line this up, is I've taken advantage of these four holes. Uh, forget my fingers out of the way. These four flight controller holes here. And when the top place is attached properly, the nylon screws, the, the head of them, I've just cut them short and they line up perfectly with these holes. And that will keep the whole thing in place and hopefully 
give me the vibration damping I need. So if I just zoom in here, um, we'll talk about the um, ESC connections first. So as you can see, there's nothing particularly clever or strange here, just a standard setup. I've attached, um, soldered the motor wires straight onto the, um, um, onto the ESCs. And if you attach them all straight, then all you need to do is reverse motors two and four in uh, BL Heli Suite um, to get your motor spinning the right way. Um, in this particular case, because I took the ESCs off a different quad, I've had to apply, attach new wires, um, both positive ground and signal and ground, um, because the existing ones weren't long enough. So because I wanted this to be a relatively clean build, and I'm probably going to go for a kind of orange and blue um, colour, um, I've basically, instead of using a red wire here, I've just decided to use a black one. Um, so this is the positive, on the other side you've got the negative, and in the middle you've got the black ground, and the blue um, signal wire for the ASC and they just attach directly to the board if I just move this over directly to the board you've got your positive here your negative here and then on this particular flight controller there aren't separate um, ground um, pads for the uh, ground of the ESC so all you need to do is just attach the ground wire um, the signal ground wire to the um, the, the main ground um, connection from the ESC um, and as you can see I've just um, looped the signal and ground wire around each other and then looped them also around the main ground wire from the ESC just to reduce noise um, and again this is a pretty straightforward flight controller it actually is really nice to solder so all your points that you need are in the right place I've got positive here, negative here and signal one here and they all line up, so you've got signal 1, signal 2, signal 3 and signal 4, the same as um, BL, uh, as um, Betaflight is set up. Um, now because these um, ESCs are potentially going in the bin, I haven't bothered to shrink wrap them, um, which I would generally do. So all I've done is I've put electrical tape on the arms, like I always do, just to act as a bit of insulation, and then I've just sat them on top of... Um, 3M double sided form tape which I generally use anyway uh, because that just gives you a little bit of um, vibration damping um, and they cope with heat really well so there's no issues there um, if I find out these ESCs are fine then I'll shrink wrap them and either use electrical tape over the top to hold them in place or possibly some um, 3D printed um, ESC covers um, other than that everything is pretty straightforward you'll notice here that um, there's a little buzzer attached to this flight controller um, the positive is here and the ground is here that's simply not something I've added on it was simply already attached to this board when I took it from the other quad um, but I'm just going to leave that in place the only other thing of note is at the front here I've put the uh, capacitor which comes with the Matic board now generally you would attach this capacitor directly underneath the battery pads here but I don't like to do that and the reason for that is if you have a crash or you hit a rock or whatever that's just going to get pulled straight off and while it probably won't damage the board itself um, I just could do without um, sort of easy uh, sort of excessive repairs so all I've done is um, used a bit of 3M foam tape and stuck it in here the one thing to note on capacitors um, from what I've read, general, capacitors come with um, two long pins, um, the negative and positive. When you're using uh, installing a capacitor, you want to shorten those pins as much as possible um, because it reduces the, the, the longer they are, the less effective the capacitor is. However, once you've reduced the pins, um, from what I've read on various sites, you can actually attach 20-gauge um, um, wire and give yourself a bit of extra room and doing so doesn't re doesn't reduce um, the capacitor's ability to do its job which of course is to reduce uh, voltage spikes and noise in the overall system um, so what I've done is I've just uh, I've just soldered on I've shortened the pins soldered on 20 gauge wire and then just wired it and it sit and it wires into the bottom of the bit that sticks out on the Matic board 
and as always when I'm using one of these side mounted um, battery connectors I'll apply liquid electrical tape um, I need to put another coat on this but basically I apply liquid electrical tape because I fly in the UK it's always wet and rainy and I hate the idea of my live um, live um, pads being so exposed to blades of grass etc whether or not it does anything or whether I'm just paranoid I don't know but that's just something I always do I'm not a huge fan of side connectors full stop if I'm honest um, and th that became part of the reason why I, I moved away from sort of top mounted frames um, to bottom mounted frames um, I like my battery lead to come out of the back on my quads I'll attach it with a zip tie so it doesn't go anywhere and on our, on our bottom mounted battery you don't have to faff around with your battery leads the, the problem and the thing I hate on quads like this which have a top mounted battery is wherever you put this invariably it will be in the wrong place or in an awkward place to attach your battery so you end up sort of looping your LiPo strap around it and that sort of stuff and I just the whole thing just irritates me um, what I prefer to do and what I consider doing is using the DYS, uh, DYS F4 which doesn't have this extended bit it has its battery pads at the bike and just running the battery wires down and through here and then up the bike but if I do that chances are um, you know if, if I haven't I suppose to cut a long story short I haven't, I haven't decided where my VTX is going to go whether I'm going to use this hole or whether I'm going to send it out the back and because of that I'm a bit leery in terms of um, using a flight controller that definitely has its, um, its wires coming out the back um, so anyway I'm waffling I'll cut this short um, everything's been pretty straightforward um, so far the only tricky bit is obviously the, the low um, stack height so on the next quick video I'll install the VTX and um, wire up the camera um, and the VTX I think I'm going to use is actually another Matic one um, it's had pretty good reviews it's one that you can um, a bit like um, the TBS Unify you can change your channels via your goggles um, in the Betaflight OSD etc not a feature I have really any need for um, but I like to try out new things and the Matic stuff seems to be pretty quality um, gear so I thought I'd, I'd give it a go whether or not I even wire up um, those features is a different matter so it'll I'll be using the new Matic VTX and I'm going to keep the old HS1177 in because I've recently uh, yesterday bought a Foxier Monster V2 from Banggood um, where it was currently on sale for 21 quid I think I got it for uh, and that's usually a sort of 33 34 quid camera um, pretty decent camera when it's sunny not so great um, when it's cloudy um, but I thought at that price I couldn't say no so I'll use the Fox here until the uh, HS 1177 until the monster arrives um, and then switch them over but yeah that's it any questions um, give me a shout but you know there's nothing unusual here the only thing I would say is don't use these ESCs go and get yourself a decent set of speed X and if you want um, flashy BL heli 32-bit um, ESCs then I don't know a huge amount about those ESCs they're pretty new and I've stayed away from them so far until beta flight 3.2 comes out and the land settles and we know what's good or what's not I haven't really seen any features on the 32-bit versions that make me want to rush out and buy them um, the, the current sensor and addressable LEDs is not something that really um, interests me but you know if they give better performance then that might be um, might be a different uh, different state of play I have noticed that um, Speedex have come out with some uh, BL Heli 32-bit ones I've no idea if they're any good um, but as I tend to love Speedex ESCs and they're, they're the best performing um, and least hassle ESCs I've ever used they'd be the ones that um, that I probably look at first if I was going to get some um, and then obviously you've got the wraiths um, and various others out there but anyway I'll um, I'll update you on my build progress next time round and thanks for watching cheers bye